But we begin tonight with the long-awaited but unsurprising news that Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. will seek a second term as the 46th president of the United States. This is not a time to be complacent. That's why I'm running for re-election. Because I know America. I know we're good and decent people. I know we're still a country that believes in honesty and respect and treating each other with dignity. That we're a nation where we give hate no safe harbor. We believe that everyone is equal, that everyone should be given a fair shot to succeed in this country. Thank you for choosing Thank us. You. Well, every generation of Americans has faced a moment when they have to defend democracy. Stand up for our personal freedom. Stand up for the right to vote and our civil rights. And this is our moment. Today marks the fourth anniversary of Biden's announcement of his 2020 campaign when he told America that the fascism he saw in Charlottesville, Virginia, inspired him to run and win. Since his election, he's crisscrossed the country, highlighting his bipartisan infrastructure bill, showcasing how it's helping to repair roads, highways and bridges, including in red states. He's also spent time talking about how he has boosted manufacturing, lowered prescription drug prices and made the largest investment in the environment in recent history. That is, of course, the Biden campaign pitch and campaigns are about selling a narrative that is helpful to the candidate. Full stop. But the actual facts of what happened in the country over the past three years do actually back Biden up. These policies that Biden is touting are real. They are being implemented. Unemployment really is low. The economy is just factually doing well. There are statistics and numbers that align with Biden's message. However, if you tune into Fox, you literally enter a different reality. In the Fox reality, nothing good is happening in Biden's America. Absolutely nothing. In fact, we live in a dystopian hellscape where no one is safe, immigrants are evil, liberals are lazy, woke degenerates. It's, it's basically Thunderdome. She was so beholden to the progressives and to the left that people died because of that mentality, that social justice nonsense. They're trying to do everything they can to, to, to get rid of guns. And what about all the people? What about that single 18-year-old girl who's just trying to get her education or go to work? Yeah. Don't you feel for her? How is she going to protect yeah. herself in these, in these radical cities? For a new science tonight that the crime epidemic under Joe Biden is completely out of control. Some stunning new video from our southern border shows throngs of people crossing into our nation illegally. Now it's about the Tennessee 3%. Yeah. Because that's about what they represented, about 3% of Tennessee. It should be the Chicago 3 or the San Francisco 3, because that's how they're acting. I mean, this is what a significant portion of the American public is consuming on a nightly basis, y'all. And some of their most avid viewers who are vying to take on Joe Biden are regurgitating that Fox MAGA talking point set of craziness as if it's all real. We're dealing with a lot of political drama that's unnecessary because you've got political vengeful people out there. And we should be talking about the fact that every state is now a border state. The federal government should be taking care of the of immigration course. issue and they should be taking care of the CCP issue. That's the kind of courage we're gonna to need to muster yes. to go after these sacred cows from woke religion in the form of affirmative action to this new climate religion, which is completely shackling the American economy and culture. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, I feel like you know and I know what is real, right? Like we live in the real world. Many of us live in cities that are not hellscapes, where women have freedom and folks aren't walking into Starbucks armed with the equivalent of an M16. Republicans, at this point, they are so completely disconnected from reality that a majority of them do not even believe that Biden was elected, even though the anchors that they listen to actually know he was and they admit it in their group chats. They do not believe that the January 6th assault on our Capitol was an undemocratic attempt to steal an election, if they believe it happened at all. Republicans, in general, do not believe that the majority of Americans oppose a ban on abortion access, that most Americans support stricter gun laws and immigration and do not want to ban books or drag shows. To put it bluntly, they do not believe the objective facts that are literally Googleable, which explains their need for alternative facts, as Kellyanne Conway once suggested during her time with the Trump administration. Take, for example, the RNC's 
fever dream of a hypothetical second Biden term that they cooked up, and this is true, entirely with artificial intelligence. This morning, an emboldened China invades Taiwan. Financial markets are in free fall as 500 regional banks have shuttered their doors. Border agents were overrun by a surge of 80,000 illegals yesterday evening. Officials closed the city of San Francisco this morning, citing the escalating crime and fentanyl crisis. Who's in charge here? It feels like the train is coming off the tracks. Chat GPT, no! <laughs> to make clear, those images you just saw are fake, and the scenes were entirely made up. But Republicans in Fox they know that their people will believe them. But you know what images are real? These images of America under Trump, which includes insurrectionists trying to crush an officer to death because he, would, they wouldn't, because he wouldn't let them overthrow our democracy. Or these images of law enforcement violently clearing peaceful protesters so Donald Trump could pose with a Bible. Or these images of people taking to the streets after Trump's appointed judges ended women's constitutional right to own their own bodies. These things actually happened because of Trump. And they are things that the majority of voters continue to reject over and over again. See Kerry Lake, see Mehmet Oz, Blake Masters, or Donald Trump for recent examples. And here is the wildest part. On some level, elected Republicans know that what I'm saying is true. They know that their vision of America isn't real, and that most people do not want to live the way they want us to. You know how I know that? You know what their tell is? They keep silencing dissent. They keep making it harder and harder to vote, and they keep gerrymandering their way to power. The question for voters in 2024, it seems to me, is do you want maybe not super exciting competency, or do you want chaos? Choose your adventure. Joining me now is Mike Memoli, NBC News White House correspondent, Cristobal Alex, MSNBC political analyst and former senior advisor to the Biden 2020 campaign, and MSNBC political analyst and former Senator Claire McCaskill. Claire, I am going to go to you first, because you have actually run for office in the real world <laughs> and also faced the, the fake world. And you know how powerful it is. I'm just going to take you back to 2022. This is four years after your last election in Missouri. Just look at these ads real quick. They want to defund the police, even as crime rages out of control across the state. Josh Riley, extreme, liberal, dangerous. Mandela Barnes stands with defund the police and supports no cash bail that releases dangerous criminals back into our communities. Streets are exploding with drugs and violence, while liberals like Tim Ryan attack and defund our police. They all lost. They all lost, Claire, because that message of dystopia works. Is Biden, what is Biden in for? I, I, I'm just, I, I don't know. Go on. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not sure that it's going to work this time. Um, I think what they have done after Dobbs and after all the slaughter in schools with military style weapons, I sense that there is a majority of Americans that see the Republican Party as extremists. And the clown car is running the circus in the Republican Party. The most extreme voices are getting the most play. And let's remember, it's really important, Joy, to get perspective here. Tucker Carlson was the number one host at Fox. He had about 3 million viewers a night. Over 150 million people voted for president last time. Mm -hmm. So I think it's easy to assume that what they're peddling over there is what the majority of the Republican Party thinks. There's a whole lot of Republicans I know in Missouri, frankly, that voted for me back in the day, that are very uncomfortable with the fact that in Missouri, the government is going to force a rape victim to give birth to the child of her rapist. They are very uncomfortable with banning books and defunding libraries. They are very uncomfortable with the, the gun slaughter going on. And I think that's where Joe Biden wins in a binary choice between the extremists and somebody who wants to unite us and, appear to our, and appeal to our better angels. Hey, let me go to you, uh, Mike, you, the, our uh, Biden whisperer. It, as I watched uh, his ad, his launch ad today, I, the word I wrote down just a moment ago is nostalgia. 
Biden is a nostalgia candidate. Mm -hmm. Like, he genuinely believes that vision of America that he put forward. So he, he, he runs as this, like, sunny optimist who says, we're better than all of this, right? Even though sometimes we ain't better than all of this, <laughs> right? But he believes it. Does he think that he can leapfrog over what is coming, where they're essentially going to basically portray him as a demon straight from the pit of hell, even though the fundamentals are actually good? Well, you know, Joe, I've been talking a lot about a lot of bad poll numbers for the president the last few days. And as I've been talking to some of the senior Biden strategists running the reelection campaign, they say that one of the things that's always been underappreciated about President Biden is that whenever they talk to focus groups, talk to ordinary voters, people see him as an optimist. People mm -hmm. see him as somebody who's been through some very difficult times in his own life and has continued to maintain this optimistic vision of the country. And so as they contrast that, and we saw it very clearly in that announcement video today with what they see is a Republican vision of a very dark, backwards-looking, you know, America, they think that ultimately Americans are going to reward the president for that. But we see, really, the three legs of the campaign stool today. It's that democracy argument. It's the uh, what Vice President Harris is doing right now, holding a rally on reproductive rights. They think abortion rights is going to be an even bigger issue in 2024 than it was in 2022. But then it's what President Biden did today, speak to a yeah. union crowd, talk about his economic accomplishments, and keep that focus on the middle class. That's why they won the blue wall states in yeah. 2020, and that's how they think they hold them in 2024. You know what's interesting?